Hey, what's going on everyone? Hope you're all doing well and staying safe. Uh, today's video, we're gonna be talking about tuning your 2.7T, as you can see here. Uh, but before we even get into that, I need to ask you all a favor. Uh, if you could go please like and subscribe, it really helps out a lot. Helps uh, YouTube recommend my content to more people and you know, gets the channel a little further out there. So just go smash that like button, um, hit the subscribe button, and also hit that not notif notification bell icon. So that way you're notified when I drop some new videos, uh, which will be dropping another one pretty soon, revealing the car uh, finally after paint. So it's been a little while since we've had it out there getting painted, getting you know a lot of things corrected. And uh, we're gonna have it back in about a week. So expect that video soon. Make sure to hit that notification bell icon so you stay notified when that drops. But moving on, so tuning your 2.73, the three stages. I will put this presentation up on the screen in a sec so you guys are uh, seeing what I'm seeing here as we talk about uh, tuning the 2.7. Uh, but before we get into that, again, uh, a, a bit of a, just a warning or just covering my own behind. I don't uh, act like I know everything. I don't want it to represent like I know everything about this platform and this motor. These are just my thoughts, what I've learned uh, from having this car and what um, others around me believe and you know just what the norm is really, uh, in my opinion. Uh, you might have other opinions. Uh, if you do, please drop them down in the comments below, but just be civil, everybody be nice, let's just have a conversation. Also, shout out to Caffeine GT, whose link I will be dropping in descriptions below. Uh, their shirt is awesome, this shirt is from them, and I've also gotten a few other shirts from them, Caffeine GT. Shout out and thank you again for the shirts. Makes me look a little big, I'm not. Anyways, let's get to it. So tuning your 2.7 T, T, the three stages. So the basics. So we're talking about the S4 engine here, the APB 2.7 T. Uh, there is the AZR block and a few other designations for blocks like BEL and whatnot. We will not be touching upon those. Actually, we will talk about them a little bit. That won't be the main focus today. Uh, today we're talking about the APB block that comes in the US spec 2.7 just to clarify all these things. So US spec 2.7 only. So it's a 90 degree V6 cast iron block. So we've all seen that, it's V6, 90 degrees, pretty normal stuff. Uh, 2.7 liters of displacement, it's in the name 2.7T. Belt driven timing. Uh, so a lot of misconceptions around the timing in our car being, you know, blah, 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 and blah, blah, blah. Uh, 30 valve dual overhead cam. So five valves per cylinder, three intake, two exhaust. So this head does breathe very well. Uh, two parallel Borg Warner KO3 turbos. So another misconception that I've heard people um, out there talking about is our car having a sequential turbo system. It is not sequential, it is parallel. Both KO3s, they're the same size and they spool at the same exact time. Uh, very small turbos, which leads to our you know nice um, flat torque curve that we have and also just that low-end grunt that our engines do have. So we have a lot of low-end torque. Uh, these cars are meant to be driven uh, quickly, you know, around town, around corners, and that, that's where they do their best. And that's why our cars are so bad uh, in the quarter mile, because those first two gears are just, you know, uh, geared towards making this engine feel torquey as, torquey as it is. ECU, Bosch Motronic ME7. So this is what gives us the ability to, you know, go as far as we do with tuning these cars. So my car is a single turbo build uh, with a lot of stuff deleted and uh, the ECU is handling it fine, you know. Uh, so it's, it's great that we had such a, for the time, complicated and advanced ECU to help, you know, 20 years later keep tuning this car to, to its ability. Stock power, we're looking at 247 horsepower, 258 pound-feet of torque. All that torque came in really low, so it made you know that really punchy um, S4 feeling that you get um, when the car is stuck. Uh, the car came with two transmissions, um, well, two available transmissions. The first and the most desirable right now is the manual six-speed um, O1E. So a transmission holds a bunch of power as long as you're nice to it. Um, and uh, really the only issues that a lot of people see with these transmissions is that one two shift collar becoming you know worn and locking you up when you're going from one to two um, other than that pretty stout transmission and will hold a bunch of power like we've seen you know out there and then we have the auto five speed ZF uh, so a transmission made by ZF decent for its time I guess um, not that special but it was available uh, next up tuning your 2.7 we have stage one and stage two 
So I put these together because stage one and stage two are pretty similar. Uh, so there's not about a variance between the two uh, when it comes to tuning and power. Um, so stage one, we have a chart here. This is from APR's website. Um, I also list a bunch of the other brands that do stage one tunes for our cars. So you have MTM, APR, Multoza, Unitronic, a bunch of others that I didn't mention here because I just didn't have the space. With that also comes custom tuning. So I uh, didn't have any custom tuners here except for Motoza, which will do some custom tuning. Uh, but you have uh, people like Brad from German Elite Tuning who will tune uh, your car to its specs. So if you want to upgrade injectors, do E85, or change any other things that you think will change the power in your car, uh, getting a custom tune will probably be better um, and will wield more power to you and I'm just a more custom power profile um, to your car. But we'll move on here. So for stage one requirements, uh, so you'll need a pair of non-blown KO3s, um, which can be rare. Uh, the KO3s are actually not that bad. You know, there's a, a, a bunch of cars out there uh, with two, 300,000 miles on them and the KO3s are still kicking. Um, but they do become a bit unreliable when you start tuning, but that's only because we take these turbos out of their efficiency range and ask them to do more than they are supposed to be able to. But uh, power potential. Um, on 93 octane, it's a gain of 65 horses over what stock gives you. So pretty solid gain for a just software flash, no other modifications. Um, 85, um, 85 pound-feet of torque, which is great as well. So you still get that great low end response from KO3s because you haven't changed the turbos and now they're spooling a little more, you know, freely uh, because the tuning's a little more aggressive. Um, a lot of these tunes reach 20, 21 PSI and then taper down a bit. And that taper is to try and keep those KO3s in their efficiency range. So with these turbos, when you try to push that much boost, um, the turbine has to spin faster, therefore creating more heat to try and keep up. So there's a lot more air being pushed into an engine at 7,000 RPM at 20 pounds of boost than at 3,000 RPM at 30 pounds of boost. So it turbo kind of struggles to keep up with that. And um, that's when we, you know, you deviate from that efficiency range that we were talking about. Moving on now, stage two, our requirements. Now you still need KO3s, again, non-blown. And if you've been stage one for a while, that's even rarer now. Uh, you need a diverter valve upgrade to help hold the boost. So our stock diverter valves are known to leak once you push, you know, a lot of boost through them. So upgrade them, they're not too expensive, and it's a mod that you'll need going forwards. Um, intake upgrade, and by this we don't mean uh, replace your entire intake. You could actually just go ahead and just put a drop-in filter. The stock airbox is pretty efficient. Uh, so drop-in filter gets you a little more flow, and that's really all you'll need. And uh, intercooler upgrade is recommended but not required. Um, this upgrade is again to deal with that extra heat you'll get from the KO3s trying to build up more boost at those high RPMs. Um, so just trying to keep those intake air temps down. Not required again, but definitely recommended. So on 93 octane, expect 80 horsepower over stock um, and around 110 pound feet of torque. These numbers will vary it from tuner to tuner, car to car, and all that stuff. So these are just ballpark numbers here. Um, power gains here come from uh, one of the other requirements that I did forget uh, to mention here, it's uh, turbo back exhaust. So turbo back exhaust will free up the exhaust gas flow after the turbo, uh, which will allow the turbo to breathe a little better, therefore get you a little more response, a little more boost um, as well. So that's really where the main gains are. It's just you, you know, eliminating some of that back pressure in the exhaust system, letting the turbos breathe more freely. Um, and that's pretty much it. Uh, mentioned here again about the KO3s uh, region their efficiency range pretty much after 5,000 RPM. They're just struggling to keep up with the air demand of the motor. But now move to stage three. So stage three is what uh, most people shoot for. Um, in all honesty, stage two is probably more than enough power for anyone on the street. But we like cars and because of that, we just got to push them, right? So stage three. Uh, here we're looking at 380 wheel horsepower. So that's that golden number, that stage three power number uh, plus. So honestly, um, a stage three car, healthy stage three car right now should be pushing a little over 400 horses, but that 380, 380 uh, is a conservative number uh, for people who go with a smaller KO, like a KO four size turbo and don't want to push too far. Uh, but that's what you'll be seeing uh, power number wise. So you'll see here from the graph that now we're seeing boost onset a little further. Uh, this is a KO4 car still. So 
you'll still see a uh, boost pretty early and create torque very early, but still a little uh, more delayed than a KO3 because of the size increase, of course. So for this, custom tuning, highly recommended. Uh, you'll be adding injectors to your car and other fueling and you know fuel pressure regulator, and maybe you wanna run E85, so this is where you wanna get into custom tuning. You know, There's a lot of little variables that'll change uh, how your car responds uh, when you upgrade turbo, so you know your inlet size, your math sensor size, all that stuff. So, um, in this case, there are many good stock mount options, and by stock mount, I mean nothing else has to be replaced other than your inlet system and um, your turbos. Uh, so we have KO4s, Borgwarner KO4s. They came on the RS4. Uh, these are bolt-in, uh, easy, super reliable. It's really what I recommend for anyone going with a you know, stage three car. Um, it'll make good power. You can make up to 450 horsepower with them, wheel horsepower. Um, definitely a quick car, nice response around town, no crazy lag. Pretty much the perfect stage three setup. And if you run it with E85, you know, you're making that you know, 450, maybe a little north of that, uh, which is plenty of power. Uh, but if you're looking for more power, there's always you know, that available. So we have TTE. Uh, tile with their Zona turbos um, and we have Silly Rabbit Motorsports and SEP Auto who are making custom K26 turbos. We also have JHM who made you know the RS6 RS's which is a K24 size turbo as well. Um, so there's a myriad of options out there. Uh, you could also go with eBay and get you know cheaper turbo. Um, again it's not going to be as reliable and I'd like to touch up on that point as well. Um, there's a lot of animosity out there in the car community when people use cheaper parts on their cars. And um, that kind of bothers me a bit because everyone has a different budget. And, you know, here in the car community, we should all just show love and appreciation for other people's builds, even if we don't agree with them. If somebody out there did a stage three setup on their car and they used parts that were, you know, less expensive because their budget was smaller and their car's still running, why should there be any hate towards them? You know, just do what you can uh, with your build and, you know, Kudos to you if you can get it done on a budget, because I wish I could have. Uh, but um, moving on from there, you could go to custom kits now too. This is where we get into that infinity power number. It's not really infinite. Every engine has its limit. But uh, you can get into like, you know, make crazy power with GT25 R's and just go nuts and make a crap load of power and, you know, blow your axles up every few thousand miles, but it'd be the fastest car out there. Um, and then you could also go single turbo like I did. I'm not saying that this is the right solution for everyone. I honestly think a KO4 setup is the right solution for most. Uh, but you could go single turbo and that just gives you an infinite amount of options when it comes to turbo. So that way you could really customize your car to whatever you want it to feel like um, when it comes to the torque curve and power and character and all that stuff. Uh, but moving on here now, stage three requirements bigger turbos that's what stage three is it's just that bigger turbo gets you past that ko3 threshold that we have it's just boom shooting for more so requirements larger math housing as well bigger intercoolers are a must here now uh, you're pushing more air that air has less time in the intercooler to get cooled down so just upgrade intercoolers it's 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 a must at this stage um inlet and boost piping upgrade so inlets um starting at the math so your math sensor housing will probably have to be increased. And just a quick explanation on that, how that works. So when you increase your math housing, you pretty much keep the same math sensor. Um, Hitachi tends to be the one that people use the most. You could do a Bosch to Hitachi conversion, but you could also use a bigger Bosch housing um, on your build. But I recommend Hitachi. But what happens is when you increase the size of the actual math housing, um, it changes up the calculation of how much air is going through. So the sensor doesn't actually see more air, uh, but what it's thinking is, for example, this is not the exact math, but if you have a one inch pipe and the uh, math sensor thinks there is 10 CFM of air coming through um, and you now go to a two inch pipe, um, that sensor is still gonna see the exact same amount of air, but now you, in the ECU, you do a calculation to say, hey, the pipe is twice as big, so now you have twice as much flow, which is not right. But now the sensor will say it's reading 20 CFM and that's how that bigger math housing works. So you'll need a bigger math housing. With bigger math housing, they'll be careful. Sometimes idle suffers, but a tuner should be able to fix this. 
uh, because the resolution of how much air is going through is minimized. Uh, so there's, it's less exact on how much air is coming through into the car. Uh, you will need a diverter valve upgrade. If you've done this for stage two, you should probably be fine going forward. So, uh, And now fuel pump, um, not required, but if you're shooting for you know north of 400 horses, you might need it or you will need it, especially if you're going with E85. You'll definitely need injectors and maybe a new fuel regulator, depending on what you and your tuner talk about uh, when you're doing this build. That's another thing I recommend too. When you're building this car, I recommend that you find your tuner before you finish up your build or before you even start your build. And just tell them what you're thinking about doing um, and they'll have recommendations because they've seen so many builds. So just let them know, I want to do this. I want to make this much power and they'll tell you what's possible and what you'll need. Uh, so that way you don't overbuy or underbuy and you, you know, end up happy with what you have. Uh, you also need a turbo back exhaust. Uh, you needed this for stage two, definitely needed for stage three. Uh, upgraded drivetrain mounts, um, kind of a must here now. So extra power means extra vibrations, which means, you know, if you have stock mounts, they're going to go quicker. So might as well replace them, especially since the engine's out while you're doing a stage three setup. Clutch, engine's out already. You're pushing more power to the clutch, upgrade your clutch. It's going to be necessary here. You don't want it slipping on the highway while you're doing a pull, or you shouldn't be doing pulls on the highway, on the drag strip or on the track um, when you're doing a pull. And brakes, uh, you're making more power, you'll move faster, you'll want to stop better. So upgrade brakes, um, doesn't have to be necessarily, you know, you go with, you know, a 17Z or 18Z or, or you know, out, Alcon brake kit or whatever it be, just, you don't have to go huge, just upgraded pads and discs will probably do the, work, the job for you. Um, depending on you know how much power you're shooting for, of course. And uh, now we talk about going further. So we talked about stage three, your power potential there, and I mentioned that infinite number. Like I said, infinite isn't really true. You can't have infinite power. Every motor has its limit, but you can make a lot of power with this car. And um, there's gonna be a few things you have to take care of if you wanna shoot for that much. So going further here, weaknesses. Um, are going to be called out on the left and solutions on the right. So this is stage three plus pl power. So if you want to go above and beyond your normal stage three car, which by normal, I mean like stock block, K04 or K24, RS6 size turbo, or even, you know, tile 605s, um, and you want to push more power above that, you know, 550 wheel horsepower mark, then you're going to need to take care of some of these things. So first thing, is rods tend to give out about 500 wheel torque um, torque is what bends throws breaks rods it's not horsepower usually when you're throwing a rod or bends it's you know at low horsepower i'm not talking you know a thousand horse um not horsepower but rpm I'm not talking about a thousand rpm but it'll be that lower rpm where your car is making its peak torque that you tend to you know throw a rod through the side of it um so around 500 wheel torque, you should start thinking about replacing your rods. Uh, they'll survive the stock ones at around 500. I've seen people push them to 600 wheel torque and they're fine, but you know, you're kind of just teetering on that line. So at around 500 wheel torque, they're known to give out. That's when you'll need to replace them. So if you're looking to shoot for more than that, get rods. There's a lar large selection of aftermarket rods out there. You can go with IE, um, powder there's uh, max beating rods if you want to go with a uh, cheaper route and people have made a ton of power with them so a bunch of solutions um so easy solutions and they could be relatively inexpensive now restrictive intake manifold over 550 wheel horsepower so we're talking here top end uh, of the rev range 550 wheel horsepower uh the intake manifold manifold tends to be a restriction a lot of people disagree with this a lot of people do agree with it Again, it's, you know, there's two camps to, to every argument. So what I've noticed and what a lot have noticed is at around 550 wheel horsepower, intake manifold needs to breathe a little better. So you could go ahead and port it, um, you know, figure out something uh, to do with the bells inside to make them floor more air. A lot of people do go with a bigger plenum as well. So they could hold more volume, therefore more air and uh, get more air into those cylinders. Um, so there's a bunch of solutions. You can get RS4 intake manifolds. Those have, you know, more meat in the runner. So you can actually have a bigger runner path. Um, there's uh, the tuner who makes the best parts out there for the 2.7. 
uh, but you'll need to donate a kidney a kidney every time you get uh, one of their parts. But hey, it, it works and it works really well. Uh, but that's uh, the second one there. Now moving on to the third, restrictive head flow over 550 wheel horsepower. And there's a few quick solutions for this. So the A4 came with a 2.8 liter um, available. So the 2.8 heads on that naturally aspirated motor flow better than the 2.7 heads on our turbo motor. Um, that better flow because it's NA, of course, so they needed that better flow to make some more power. Our heads were a little more restrictive, but that was to promote uh, low end torque, just like I spoke about that earlier. So now when you go with the 2.8 upgrades, usually what people do is either they go with the cams or they go with the whole 2.8 heads. Now when you go with the cam, uh, usually you just replace the intake cam. Um, that's the one that has the more aggressive cam profile to get you more air, you know, uh, for combustion. And then there's, uh, if you go with the 2.8 head, the complete head, uh, the heads actually have larger runners inside and larger ports uh, so you can get more air through the heads and into uh, the cylinder for each power stroke. Now that comes at a cost. With the 2.8 heads, you do lose a little bit of low end grunt. Um, it's just a trade off. You know, if you want more flow up top, you need to sacrifice something down low. Um, so, you know, a little more top end, you know, you can rev out a little further, get more air through, but you suffer a little low end. So, you know, keep that in mind if you're looking to upgrade to two-way cams or heads. Uh, the cams would uh, net you more air, but less sacrifice um, on the low end, but you won't make as much top end. And again, the heads flow more in, in totality. So they sacrifice a little more low end, but you get a lot more top end. Now, APB block uh, webbing over 650 wheel horsepower, which is around 650 torque as well. Torque is what breaks these things. Uh, so the webbing tends to crack. It's uh, weak, it, uh, you know, not weak per se, but it, it, that's the weak point in the block um, at around these power numbers. So, you know, that's what people have seen. So this is the next bottom end modification after you do rods, um, you know, to, to yield more power here, uh, to be able to put more power through the block. So there's a few solutions to this. You can use a BEL or AZR block. Uh, AZR is said to be even better than the BEL uh, when it comes to that webbing down low. Uh, but those blocks are a little more stout. They have more meat down there to hold more power. So uh, upgrading to an BEL or AZR block from the APV will help you out with uh, that stronger webbing. Um, you could also get a girdle for the car. Uh, you can see the picture of the girdle here in the bottom right corner. Uh, this one is from the tuner, I believe, if I remember correctly. But that'll reinforce, uh, you know, the crankshaft mounting points and all that to better dissipate, uh, you know, the vibrations and all the forces that are being, uh, you know, spread throughout the block. So it'll spread them even better, give you better vibration and, you know, load management throughout the entire block. Um, now, the last thing we talk about here is restrictive exhaust manifolds over 600 wheel horsepower. So if you guys have ever seen an S4 intake manifold out, it's a, it's a lie when you see those, you know, the, the outer pipe, that's just like a cover. It's like a heat wrap basically, but metal. Um, the inner ports are like this big, they're tiny. So, and the pipe is as well. So restricts exhaust flow. And again, that's at the benefit of low end torque. So it speeds up the air. So your turbo spool faster, uh, when it's lower RPM because that air has to move, you know, it's a smaller channel. So air tends to move faster through a smaller hole than a bigger one. So in this case, low RPM, that's great. High RPM, when you have so much air, this actually just becomes a restriction then. Um, if you were to go with a larger intake manifold, uh, there's a bunch of options out there. Uh, again, you can talk to SEP, the James S4, I believe has some, uh, drop the link to hit their Instagrams and websites down below. Um, and a whole bunch of other myriad of options. So I, th I think um, AWE made some and there's you know, cheap ones on eBay, which might crack. So fair warning, same as the AWE ones. Uh, they have been known to crack. I'd recommend you get something newer from these uh, newer men, you know, newer people who are building these things because they've seen the issues from the past. You could also go single turbo and that'll kind of uh, help with that situation. So single turbo kits, um, unless you get a custom one, uh, most of them actually use manifolds from those 2.8s we spoke about earlier. And just like those 2.8 heads, uh, those intake manifolds flow better. So they're bigger inside, can get more air out, therefore you can make more power top end. Again, those bigger, those bigger pipes, bigger ports will suck a bit of the low end torque out 
Um, so you'll have to you know rev out higher and make that same amount of torque. And that's basically it. So uh, there's a lot of stuff I didn't cover. You know, I could be here for two hours talking about this engine, but I hope this gives you guys an idea of just you know the levels to the game uh, with the S4 and the 2.7. Uh, so there, you know, there's a thank you first of all to to everybody and every company and any anyone who's involved with this car who keeps making parts. I mean, you're keeping this platform alive. It's 20 something years old now, uh, like 23, 24 years old if you're counting. You know, the cars released in Europe. So it's amazing that we still have you know support for this platform. Such big support. Still people making new parts and you know just reinventing. Uh, the platform altogether. So thank you to all of you who are. Um, I need more S4s to buy more parts to try all the new things. So you know, hopefully YouTube takes off or something so I can keep buying more S4s. We'll see. But anyways, uh, thank you again to Caffeine GT uh, for the shirt. It's awesome. Links down in the description. Shout out to B5 Freaks on Instagram. Uh, if you don't follow us already, follow us there. I dropped that link down below as well. Uh, I'll Drop all the other links that I spoke about um, earlier down below as well. Make sure you guys follow uh, on Instagram at Quattro S4 as well. So you can keep, I said as well a lot of times there. But anyways, you can keep uh, up to date on everything that's going off the car. And the content flows a little faster than on YouTube. So, you know, you'll be a little more up to date. Uh, but make sure to like, subscribe, and I'll catch you guys on the next one. Peace.